<laughs> I showed up. I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry I slept in. And all the hair and makeup people were like, they won't know. <laughs> they won't know. <laughs> oh, no, no, one, no one survived that night. Welcome, friends and fans, to another edition of GalaxyCon Live, where we are bringing the convention experience directly to you. And today, we are going back to Eureka, Oregon, with, uh, with our today's guests. So without further ado, let's head on down to Global Dynamics and see who we find. Our first guest is a writer and producer whose body of work includes Nowhere Man, The Flash, and Scream, the TV series. Today joins us as a co-creator and runner of Eureka. Please welcome Jamie Palia. Hey, guys. Good to be here. <laughs> Oh, glad to have you here, boss. How are you doing in your corner of the world? Um, I'm in Chicago right now visiting college campuses for my son. So it's it's warm, but um, I'm, I'm happy that I was able to be a part of this. Oh, so glad to have you here. And, and again, um, th thank you. Thank you for this vision. And uh, thank you for giving these wonderful uh, actors uh, uh, really good characters, really great story arcs. And it was a fun ride from start to finish. Oh, thanks. I, you know, obviously it was not just me, Andrew Cosby, who I co-created the show with, and, yes. and an incredible group of, of writers that we've had over the years. Um, everybody, uh, I think, brought something really special to it. So, and I, I suspect you, I suspect your team in the writing room had a lot of fun too. I think so. We did. <laughs> I think it, I think it shows in the final product. Absolutely. No question about that. Well, once again, Jamie, thank you so much for joining us. Let's bring out this amazing cast. She is an actress and producer whose credits include Eli Stone, Earth 2, and the highly undervalued series Hooperman. Today, she joins us to discuss the role of psychotherapist and bed and breakfast proprietor Beverly Barlow. Please welcome Deborah Ferntino. Hi. Deborah. Deborah Hooperman. That was a long time ago. It was, but I, mm -hmm. anytime we have a guest here that was on it, I always got to bring it up because it oh, was a, it, it was a, an undervalued gem for its time. Thank you. Oh, it was great. a lot of fun. I learned how to laugh. John Ritter is probably no offense, Jamie, but the funniest person I've ever known. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, Deborah, I hope everything is good in your corner of the world. A lot of gratitude. Oh, absolutely. Well, mm -hmm. Gratitude is ours as well. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you. And next, he is an actor and musician whose roles include Two Broke Girls, True Blood, and The Oval. Today, he joins us to discuss the role of mathematician and head of research, Nathan Stark. Please welcome Ed Quinn. Look at him. Hey, buddy, how are you? Hey, good, boss. How are you? Uh, you uh, hanging out in the car? I'm hanging out in the car today. I, I got double booked. I'm at a charity youth sporting event way out in Lancaster, so I'm... Uh, I, uh, but I was able to break away. They gave me a little little time off for uh, to come and say hi to everybody. Well, thank you so much for joining us, and thank you for supporting a charity event. Really appreciate that. No, that's you know, it's one, it's one of the few perks of the of the of the uh, job is uh, able to kind of um, you know go out and have some free time to try and make some sort of difference. That's very good. What 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 is the charity you're supporting today? Uh, the Jimmy Miller Foundation. Um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. We, we usually do outreach with. Um, uh, with with wounded warriors or with different uh, um, at risk youth, and um, we're out here today uh, working with some soldiers. We usually do a lot of surf therapy, or out here in the desert doing a whole different program. Oh wow! Well, again, yeah. okay, that's that's absolutely fantastic. Uh, thank thank you so much for supporting that. That's really cool. Yeah. And thank you for joining us here today as well. Glad glad thank glad you. we could get this, get these schedules to work. Ah, and next she is an actress whose work includes Go Figure, Living Among Us, and Higher Power. Today she joins us to discuss the role of genius teenager Zoe Carter. Please welcome Jordan Henson. <laughs> hey. Go figure, huh? We had to bring that one up. <laughs> I just pulled this up. Jordan, how are you? I'm good. How's everyone? I think we are all doing well. So glad to have you here. And uh, everything you. is good in your corner of the world? Everything is great in my corner. Absolutely. I'm not doing charity today, but I will get on it. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, thank you again for joining us today. Thank Absolute you pleasure to have you here. That's definitely. And next, he's an actor whose credits include Once Upon a Time, Watchmen, and Smallville as the my favorite live action version of the Toy Man. Today, he joins us to discuss the role of cafe owner and molecular gastronomist Vincent. Please welcome Chris Coche. Peace. <laughs> Chris. <laughs> Chris, how are you? Doing well, man. Thank you. 
Oh, good. No, thank you so much. And uh, uh, Jamie, this question may be for you too. Uh, did Vincent ever have a last name? <laughs> um, gosh, you know, I don't think we ever. I don't think we ever <laughs> gave this <laughs> No. <laughs> I feel like he was just going to be, you know, just the mono name. It's like, like Cher. I think it was, yeah. <laughs> it worked. It worked. I just thought maybe there was at some point he showed an ID or was like printed somewhere, or a, a, a business license on the wall, and somebody came up with it. No, it's just, it was, yeah, I, I double checked. Instance. Well, you went, you went deep for that, for that, for that little bit of trivia. So, um, it's, yeah, no, it's, it's what. It's what, it's what I do. It's what I do. So anyway, Chris, thank you so much for joining us here today. Absolute pleasure again. And you killed it on Watchmen. Thank you very much. Oh. Absolutely. Absolutely. And next, she is an actress whose credits include Battlestar Galactica, The 100, and Supernatural. Today, she joins us to discuss the role of Deputy Sheriff and Head of Security, Josefina Jo Lupo. Please welcome Erica Serra. Oh, hello. Hello. Erica. How are you? So you're uh, you're roughing it today, we see. I am. Well, <laughs> sort of roughing it, but yes, roughing it. <laughs> oh, sorry, that's right. Well, so glad to have you here today, Erica. Again, thank you for joining us. And um, Alistair Galactica, big fan of your body work on that. Awesome. My pleasure. So excited uh, to see you guys. Definitely. And next, and next he is an actor whose body of work includes High Zombie, The Magicians, and Daredevil. Today, he joins us to discuss the role of global dynamics researcher and occasional visitor to Warehouse 13, Dr. Douglas Fargo. Please welcome Neil Grayson. Yay! 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 <laughs> Neil! <laughs> Neil, how are you doing, sir? I'm great. It's there's a big heat wave going on over here, so I think I'm going to get shinier and shinier and shinier. <laughs> but luckily, I have Aww. my enormous water bottle. That is, what is it? Yeah. It's the biggest. That is enormous. Yeah, it's Perfect. two liters of water, so I'm going to be swigging on this. If you need Lots to take a bathroom break. Yeah, I'm about to say, if you need to take a break, just give me a time up and we'll just, uh, we'll, we'll keep on going. So. Well, I have a second <laughs> empty one under my desk, you know, oh, to keep everything going smooth. Oh, make things easy, <laughs> smart. You're a, you're a wise and smart man, sir. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. And finally, she is an actress and director whose body of work in front of behind the camera include Doom Patrol, The Punisher, and Stitchers. Today, she joins us to discuss the role of doctor and Department of Defense agent Allison Blake, later Allison Carter. Please welcome Sally Richardson with Hello. Oh, oh. Great to see everyone. This is amazing. Sally, <laughs> so glad to have you here. Uh, you have been, you have been really knocking it out as a director, and I I, have a, I really have a big admiration for the the work you've done in 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 so much of the genre and the fan stuff. And thank you so much for that. And real quick, a big fan of Gargoyles, so thank you for that contribution as well. <laughs> thank you. Well, you know, Eureka gave me my start in directing, so. Um, not only do I, uh, like, it was it my favorite show on TV ever, and I, you know, you never know what you're going to miss until it's gone, and miss it, and miss all these people, um, but it also gave me my new life. So, thank you, Jamie. Aww. Aww. Thank you, Jamie. I love that. That was very, that was a very <laughs> easy choice to, to make that. You did the work. <laughs> well, distinguished guests, thank you for joining us here on the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Our team is going through our chat room right now, pulling out the questions for you. In the meantime, I'd just like to throw this out. Uh, this show, being an effects laden show, is uh, all got all kinds of uh, production challenges and stuff like that. So all things can happen. So for each of you, what was the craziest day in the set that you can recall that you had? Uh, well, I like to say that my craziest day was when... I remember being pregnant during the season with my son um, and being outside shooting something with, you know, it's freezing, wind machine on me, and some sort of ship that's landed that I think Joe's wife was coming from or something. And I was like seven months pregnant and, um, and Jamie had written a stupid amount of text talks for me. <laughs> Um, and most of the time, um, uh, you know, my mantra was, am I allowed to curse? Okay. Um, was, yes. you know, 
Um, I remember that. You did say that a lot. Yeah, I have to say, I agree. I noticed that after I started working on that show, I started swearing. And the outtakes, it was all Sally going, fuck! (laughs) (laughs) That was a lot of that. Um, Because the dialogue was so difficult. But um, I just remember that being like, I decided that once I got pregnant, Jamie started writing more stuff just to irritate me. <laughs> <laughs> that's just a broad memory there. Okay. <laughs> that, that's great. Who's there got was, another? There was, there was one day actually, uh, just to feed off of what Sally said, where because I knew how irritated she was with her tech talk, and she hated it when we did any line changes on the day, that I, I actually had somebody slip some fake changes into her trailer that was like this whole long monologue of the talk. <laughs> that as it got further down, you started to realize that I was making up words. Like, <laughs> and I just, I all I heard was, someone was like, where the fuck is Polya? And I could hear her <laughs> marching through. She came you down. You were always making up words for, as far as I was concerned. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Could have been when they're tech words, right? You could be like, yeah, I'm like this is it. None of this is real. Right. I was stoked when I was just a, a delinquent teenager and then I started <laughs> becoming a doctor and then all my words just changed around me. Yeah. I still remember Sally, and we talked about this the other day when you, uh, her first directing job, Sally directed. Uh, Beverly Barlow put a brain implant into her brain, and so Sally had to be Beverly and direct her self. And I didn't realize how technically complex that show was until recently, and she stayed so calm the whole day. And I was so amazed at her Beverly, her looks. I'm like, you're a better Beverly than I am. She was a better Aww. Beverly. Oh, you were no, she's so wrong. And you directed it and you stayed super calm. And you think about all that the special effects and the, the technical stuff, we'd have to double shoot scenes and go I, I, I was confused and you you see you uh, have I so love well. being Beverly. I love being yeah. Beverly because she may be the best character on the show. <laughs> I, I love the way you look at your wardrobe. So like, and so <laughs> and, oh, I get to really be like I love being here. Yeah. When you walk down the street, I'm like, yeah, this is you. <laughs> I, I love that episode. That was Omega Girls because it also had Joe Lupo and Zoe like having to save Ooh. the day. Oh my God. That was an intense episode. I mean, that what? Was- it was, remember, like, that was when the whole town got knocked unconscious, and it was only... And it was just us. It was just the two oh, of you. Oh, yes. Erica, don't you remember that shot? You guys get out of the car, and, it, like, we're, like, pushing street. across all these people passed out. I do, the yeah. Two of you get out of the car, and you're like, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> those, are big, those are big scenes to shoot. That's the really big on IMDb, right? right? <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> Sally, was that an eight-day shoot for Maker Girls? Yeah. Uh, might have been, yeah. We always had we always had eight days. We just kind of snuck them in there. Yeah. <laughs> um, in the B roll, yeah. I remember yeah. that was the one where you had a half day because I got stuck in Texas after Dragon Con. Oh, so we did <laughs> Yeah, I was in Texas and I had like one scene in that episode and somehow we got like there was like a lightning storm or something. So we had to like me and Allie got stuck in Texas. And we had to fly like the first flight the next day, go directly to the to set, unshowered and everything. I remember just like stumbling in, being like, "Oh my god, I've just been in like dank Texas, like heat and wet, and now I gotta go do a scene with you guys, and I smell like the worst." But yes, that was fun. I remember that day specifically. None of us will ever forget that smell. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I have a favorite memory. Yes, please. Uh, my favorite. My favorite memory is the first time we went to Chilliwack in season one. I think the episode was Dr. Nobel. And it was like a bunch of high school kids getting away from home for the first time. We did a day. So everybody loads on the buses and we do a day of work. And everybody's staying in hotels in Chilliwack, which started at like like nice sushi dinners. Turned into this octagonal at this like Western bar with a mechanical pole. Chilliwack and Petrovich bringing out 
Shooters. Huge trays of shots. Now, I didn't have to work in the morning. But I showed up about midday. And I think we can all agree that Sally Richardson is probably like in the 99.99% percentile of most beautiful women on the planet. Yeah. I swear she was a shade of green. And the entire crew, the crew couldn't talk. People were standing there in the sun, sort of having the DTs. And the, 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 the director looked at me and he goes, you guys are the biggest bunch of idiots I've ever seen in my entire life. I mean, everybody, nobody slept. Everybody tried to play through. Everybody was so hungover. So you ever watched Dr. Nobel in the end? We're all kind of like, oh, something was exploding or some crap was going on. And we're all looking up. There's a photo of it. Look at that photo again. <laughs> Look at all of our eyes. There's nobody except for Colin. Colin stayed hey, home, but he was—he hey, was the one. I was, he was standing. I was fifteen. Like, I was fifteen. No. I looked great. Okay. Yeah, you, <laughs> yeah, you look fantastic. I would I hope you weren't doing shots if you were there. <laughs> yeah. We did not contribute to the delinquency. No, it didn't happen, Jamie. It didn't happen. No, it really didn't happen. They don't. No, know. I didn't know about it, Jamie. It didn't. I was going right. to say, Jamie, you're uh. Chilliwack is where we would shoot. We'd go there every few episodes to shoot our town, the um, the exterior of it. And yeah. um, that's what we're talking about. And that was kind of our-, our That was our the first time. I remember you. That was, that was, our, that was our let loose place. And then we just stopped. Then it was- Okay, but not Sally. a few times and then it was- What are you talking about? Sally, in Chilliwack, I went to your room. Sally is like made a gym in her hotel room. She's up there going up and down, out. And I'm like, I used to watch you know workout videos well, and sit on the Eric, couch. And you know, because like, after you have some babies, you're trying to get back in shape. And I said, I had a baby, so I was like, uh, I'm not. I mean, you were up. to be honest, yeah, though, yeah. you were obnoxiously yeah. good at that, having babies yeah. and then getting in amazing. And then getting in shape. I'm still working on that. He's fine. Me too. So, I've I'm never, I've never had, had a baby, and I'm. Still working on that. <laughs> you had a baby and came back to work, and I you didn't have a baby. You were wearing a fake belly. Come on, it's better than me, and I wasn't even having babies. It's annoying. Same. Same. And that's why right, she was working out everywhere. Right? Uh, <laughs> uh, there I just you remember go. one Chilliwack thing where I showed up like two hours late one day and nobody was the wiser i didn't work for like six hours i showed up i was like oh my god i'm so sorry i slept in and all the hair and makeup people were like they won't know <laughs> they won't know <laughs> no, one, no, one, no one survived that night i think there was more than that in that hotel though too which because it always kind of affected me but yes i'm gonna blame it on the mold Mm -hmm. yeah, my God. I love I, think I kind of remember that Neil was I working that day I think so yeah but like everyone like was just like overwhelmed and no one cared yeah <laughs> like they didn't know I don't know if we filmed anything that day yeah the stories that come out nine years later Jamie, you look we fine. Were very You're good. Don't okay. listen to any of these stories. <laughs> 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 you guys all are just telling the worst stories of the worst. <laughs> Wait, I, I, okay, I'm going with it. You guys the best. Our episode when we all went back in time, because that's another favorite episode. Yes. The, oh, the that was great. Things episode. going back. What what year was it? That that was season four. That was season four. No, 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 no. It was the fake year. <laughs> Wasn't it like 1949 or something? 1947. Yeah, so, yes, hey, so I remember much, something. Erica, that was good. So much fun. To, we got to do the, I mean, between that and doing a cartoon. Uh, our, our that cartoon, was the best. Got, yeah, cartoon, I didn't go back great. in time. I was not I was not animated. I was the one singing like telling the story. The story. Uh, I liked Purple yeah. Haze because everyone, the truth came out. I thought that would, what would yeah. really happen? Would that be interesting if that happened today? If I something I came out, if so everybody bad. had to tell the truth, including like journalists, purple, including politicians. I have to say, for Purple Haze, like two of my favorite scenes from that whole season from the series, one was with, with, uh, with with Beverly and 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 Allison in the cafe, and then the other one though was 
was with with uh, with Stark and Colin and and Allison in the rotunda when you guys you had like the best comedic timing on that scene. It was back and forth, back and forth. Everybody was just sort of saying exactly what they were thinking. And it was like you hit a comedic, I think, sort of level that we hadn't done yet in the season. And it was like you really saw the chemistry, you know, between Colin and Ed and, and Sally in that scene. It was just like that was so much fun to write. Oh, Those three awesome. worked so great together. Jamie, you really had a, uh, you know, what was great about the show is that it was, you know, you have this quirky humor, but then it could really just go dark too, which I think mm -hmm. is kind of your sweet spot of, you know, of, of how you write, which is- It's like dark. your personality. Sweet and really dark. <laughs> Again, I have to like I, I can't take all the credit for that. I, that was you know Andy Cosby who created the show with me, and like this incredible group of writers that we've had over the years, and, and including Bruce Miller, who was such a big part of the last few seasons too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It was uh, it was a pleasure to get to work with everybody. And, and it was a it was it was, it was a pleasure a to watch you all. It really was. This this was this really was a fun show. I, I enjoyed all your part. Matter of fact, I just I thank you all for your talents. I thank you all for your professionalism, and I thank you all for your performances and your writing because this this was one of the best. This was one of the good ones. And as a credit to uh, all of you and and your expertise. Thanks, Bradley. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank Absolutely. You. We are good to go to audience questions. So I'll say let's go ahead and jump in our first one. And this comes from Brian, who wants to know, were any of you inspired by real life scientists or geniuses, either for your roles or just in life in general? No. <laughs> I, mean, I can't think of anyone in <laughs> You're gonna find out how stupid we are. No, no, no. I no, 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 no. <laughs> military women and that was about it, but I can't, I can't tell you their names. I don't remember. <laughs> but I did, I bought these books and I read about oh. women in the military and what their experiences were like. Oh, okay. Being in special forces, but I don't know their names. It's a long time. Uh, actually, that's, that's fine. fine. There were many times I, I would I, not know. I wanted to make sure I was saying the word right and I'd ask Joe. I go, Joe, am I saying this right? He goes, Me? yes. He goes, do you want to know what it means? I go, I do not. <laughs> oh, yeah. that was true. He, goes, he goes, how can you just oh, do this line worry. and not know? I said, do I sound like I know what it means? <laughs> <laughs> and I go, well, there you go. <laughs> I love it. What I did oh, yeah. was I would look it up on Wikipedia, and that would confuse me even more. So I was like, I don't know what any of this means now. So I just had this sort of process of, is it good? Am I excited about it? <laughs> Am I excited about it because it's bad? And then I kind of just like, you know, went with that thing because yeah, just looking at the Wikipedia and all of that was just another hole of like, oh, I have no, I'm, I'm a big fat phony. So <laughs> I think we all were in this case, yeah. right? Well, it, it, honestly, my dad, my dad was a Rhodes Scholar. He was chairman of the history of, or the rhetoric department at Berkeley. And my dinner table was actually full of random geniuses. And like my beard was actually uh, Dr. Thomas Brady, who was the chairman of the history department. And the sort of weird, aloof disconnect of arrogance. Uh, my dad wrote Czesław Milos's biography. He literally met the uh, Polish uh, Nobel laureate on the bus going to campus. And we'd have this guy over for dinner. I mean, he's one of my dad's friends. And he had this really weird disconnected arrogance that I always tried to put into Stark. So, wow. Yeah. Nice. So, that wow. is the only, answer, right? Joe, we're the only actual intelligent people on the entire show. Or, or he just made all that up and none of us will know. He's a really good actor. So, Hey, I just want you to imagine how disappointed my dad was in me that I'm <laughs> playing Nobel laureates and, and been, like literally clawed my way through Berkeley and ran as far away from academia as possible. I, I'm like, the, you know, there's that, there's that football dad whose dad's like, kid's kind of like a little pussy artist. Yeah, I was the opposite. I had this genius dad. He's like, how did I get this mongoloid from a son? All I wanted was just like smart, erudite, passionate kid who loves literature, and I get this moron, so yeah. Mm. <laughs> 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 
Well, you're not a moron. You remembered all of those things. So, you know, there's something there. Yeah. Hey. You're an actor. You remember dialogue. There's something, you know? That's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, you are so you. We made the rewrite. So, we had to, we had to memorize. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. uh, I, you, you, you play the Keep telling it. My Let's best see. take home, my best take home from this show is Jamie, you have prepared me for any anything that anybody throws at me on any show. I'm like, we used to do eleven pages or yes. pages. People do five pages a day. Right. We did eleven with rewrites. It mm -hmm. was my memorization is unbelievable now when it comes to dialogue. So thank you for that. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> And by the way, some of you guys don't know out there uh, watching that Deborah Ferentino is actually herself very scientifically inclined yeah. and was going back to school. Well, you guys could all blame me for the Akashic Field story. I was just going to say, you tell, you tell the story. I think it's better coming from you. No, it's better coming from you. <laughs> all I remember is walking into the writer's room with a stack of books in which was such clarity for this obscure story we had to do passion and all of you look around and like I don't really know what she's talking about. Oh yeah. yeah. It was awesome. It was the science of the Akashic field. And she brought in literally a, a brought a stack of books in, came in and sat with all the writers and then she came into my office and she was just like, there's your homework. And oh. uh, Okay, so we had three smart people on the show. Fantastic. <laughs> and, if you, and if you go back and you look at it actually in the in the pilot, that is the book that um uh, that when, when Walter and Susan were in bed, there was that whole scene. That's the book that is being read. Is the Science of the Akashic Field book that Deborah Ferentino brought into us. So it changed really the whole mythology of the show. I am learning so much today. <laughs> I didn't know that. That's fantastic. I love that. Ah, good stuff, Brian. Thank you. Obsessed. And let's roll another one. This comes from Dreamer. <laughs> <laughs> Who played the most pranks on Colin Ferguson? Oh god! I was never there. We didn't really play, do pranks. If no, I no, 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 no. Colin played pranks on me a lot. Oh, oh, I was messing with everybody. Yeah, I had like weird phobias. Like I was just coming into my teenage years. Like I didn't like my Achilles heel to be touched. He'd climb under my cash chair and like grab it. I remember that. One. And I didn't like to. Oh, the thunder's coming. And I didn't like to touch newspaper, and he would like hide it like in my chair, so I'd have to like touch it. <laughs> I remember that actually. I am really <laughs> learning a lot today. Yeah, I had no idea either, Erica. No clue. Oh, he was okay. The best part was the caterer. Guys, did we eat well? Um, <laughs> a little too well, well, you know what I mean. I bring food everywhere because I think you can't. I went to Afghanistan. I literally brought craft service with me in a duffel bag. <laughs> It's like we were sport. That was really, I think it's you know, in a world where there's so much hunger and so much waste that it is such a privilege to be on a set where one of the caterers that are employed, but the Canadian caterers brought so much love to the process. And I'm sure with the virus, it must be incredibly difficult for them to do their jobs. It you know? is. Um, so what that is, that was really, they went all out and someone's birthday, even if we made it up, we'd get a cake. <laughs> yeah, they were uh, the, the same guys were on The Magicians as well as uh, Girlfriend's Guide. I think they were on that one too. I keep on sort of seeing them when I pop up in the shows. And I don't know if you see them again. I spent a lot of time. They were on Mistresses. We did, oh, we did one season of Mistresses yeah. in Vancouver. And I had the, the whole time where I was on Mistresses, they were our, our caterer. They were so good. Wow. Yeah. Jeremy and Ward Wise. It has nothing to do with what you asked. Sorry. <laughs> no, I, 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 it's all but about the rabbit I do hole. have a stupid me and Colin in our stupid war that we had, not necessarily pranks, but it was the <laughs> dumbest thing that we did where we found these high powered flashlights. They were like props for some reason. Oh my God. And we decided that we were going to flashlight war with each other. So we would just kind of be like, you know, hey, Colin, guess what? And then I just, Flash him in the face and he would do the same to me. And then eventually we were like, oh my God, I can't see anymore. Like I'm not like spotting. Are we just like destroying each other's eyes? And we kind of were like, oh yes, yes, this is an incredibly stupid thing to do. Let's just stop this now. 
So that was like the most cranky thing oh, that Jason, we've done. Before. I do remember when we were doing the pilot. Yeah. Remember when we were doing, so me and Colin, it's our first day. We have this huge, long walk and talk. First time you see inside. Um, the RV. Uh, uh, no, no, no. The first the, time we're walking through. Uh, uh, global Dynamics? Global Dynamics. <laughs> And remember Einstein, Einstein? That's right, he got you. <laughs> On accident, I said Einstein, Einstein. You know, and then he kept saying it and messing me up. And he like, he said Einstein, like right before every take, he would just be like, don't worry, it's Einstein. And, <laughs> and, then, and then one after the next, she got through her dialogue and then hit Albert Einstein. <laughs> that's, that's where the fuck started. <laughs> we would do that. We would do that all the time to, to Sally. There was once we were out. I heard that high school, and she had it, whatever that very famous um, obs observatory is in Hawaii. She came up to us in a, in a panic. Goes, how do I pronounce this? And all I remember is calling. I kind of looked at it, and he looked at me, and I said, Holly Ocula. <laughs> and she was fine. <laughs> so she went. The next day, Grant Rosenberg came like after us. I'm like, oh my God. And he was like, you two motherfuckers. Do you know how much that we couldn't get that word out of her head? We had the loop. Like, they were, were so mad. And of course, Colin and I have tears for me and our eyes are crying so hard. <laughs> oh my God. But yeah, it was, it, was always, it was always fun to give Sally a fun pronunciation because she would lock onto that like a pit bull onto a neck. <laughs> And then, and then the Brooks try to no, that's that's not how you pronounce it. Oh my god! <laughs> uh, too much. Uh, Dreamer, thank you. Erica, Very is it hot fun there? Question. <laughs> I had my fans on and I couldn't hear anybody. So now I, the sun oh. is right there. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I'm like my table's here. So I've got it's it. like a, it's like it's like nature's sauna. Just enjoy it. Well, I think it's like what 35, 40 out. Like it's hot right now. Hot. I don't do I mean, Celsius. If you know that, I don't know what that even means. I mean, it's like a hundred and maybe I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> oh no, wait, very hot. Forty would be a hundred and four. So, oh, that's a lot. That's very hot. So, yeah, Sally, I thought you were gonna, in history. I, I thought Sally was going to talk about the the RV scene from the pilot when you guys were walking in with you and Colin. And we had been waiting and waiting on that take. And I was sitting uh, in Video Village with Andy Cosby, who I cre co-created the show with. And all right. And Andy said to me, because there's that part, they walk over and he figures out that Brian <laughs> is hiding inside of, you know, the 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 uh, the, the banquet there. And 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 Andy says to me, God, it's too bad that one of us can't fit in there. And I was like, I'll do it. And I literally like just wedged myself into this tiny little space where I'm pretty sure that Andy and Peter O'Fallon decided to like let everybody take an extra 10 minutes while I was still sitting in there like sweating for 15. <laughs> and then they came in and did their take. And when they opened it up, I burst out of the two of them. And Colin screamed like a girl and Sally like reared back like she was going to punch me. <laughs> <laughs> it was a really interesting like study that's of the really, that tells you a lot. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure that made it to like the blooper reel for season one. So, Sally's oh, uh, a badass. And I do feel like I have to say, I mean, I miss obviously oh, we, we miss I, having Colin here and we miss having Joe here and 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 Matt Frewer. I mean, it would be great. I, I'm looking forward to maybe for our ten year we can you know we'll get everybody. Teddy, that'd be great. I, I we 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 we've met, we've had Matt here before and I adore him. So yeah. I, 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 oh God, yes. Beautiful human being. Absolutely, oh, absolutely. He, he 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 humored my Max Headroom questions. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dreamer, thank I you. Saw Amanda great question. Pace the other day, she's doing yeah, great. Yeah, she is. Question. We've yeah. we've had her on air as well. It, 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 again, very delightful. So, yeah. Dreamer, that was a great question. Let's roll another one. What do we have? There's from Jean. If you could chat with anyone from history, who would you pick? I, 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 I do not have an answer for this, but I remember this question when we'd be on panels. <laughs> I'm like this. Oh. My, mine would be something lame like Johnny Cash. Like, I don't think I'd pick anyone prolifically you know, Why would political. That be? Johnny, because I feel like, 
<laughs> I know. I feel like people are people are expecting you to be like, oh, I want to talk Perfect. to Tesla or you know Abraham Lincoln, but no, mine would be Johnny Cash. No, I. I kind of just want to see a dinosaur. I got your back. I feel like, <laughs> <laughs> was like T Rex. <laughs> Can I just see it? I mean, I don't want to go anywhere near it. I don't want to talk to it. Air and how big it is, and that's the end of the story. That's all I want. Yeah, that's I think fair. I'd want it to be like someone like like who who made bread for the first time. <laughs> Who's that person? Right, like. That would be interesting. That's that a is long such, conversation. That is you know, such a Neil answer, though. Like, like who's the first person who ate a lobster? Who like looked at a lobster and was like, "I want the sea bun, and I'm gonna put it in here." You kind of want to be like, "Why would you do that?" There's all this other stuff around. They're like, "No, sea bug, sea bug in my mouth," and just want to know what you know what they were thinking. Bug in my mouth. Yeah. Yeah, the fourth, the fourth or fifth time, I figured out. Don't eat the outside; eat the inside. <laughs> yeah, right? like, like, really? it breaks teeth. <laughs> it hurts my gums, but then I don't know. I don't know that person. Maybe that guy invented butter. Right <laughs> there, you go. I, uh, have, I want to have tea with Jesus. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would there like to go. ask him, like, what? Look what's happened to the world. I need. Mean, this is not the way you planned it. <laughs> <laughs> We've all gone wrong, so. Tea. Oh Good We've tea. <laughs> so, so, okay, yeah. we got Johnny Cash, Lobster Eater, Jesus. I invented <laughs> bread. Dinosaurs. 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 Dinosaur. Uh, Ed, how about you? <laughs> Ed. Uh, if, it could be, if, it's, if it's actually going to be like a, a, an honest conversation, it would probably be JFK because I would just Ooh. everything from the Bay of Pigs to getting into Vietnam to, to be on the cusp of the civil rights movement. To, who did he piss off? Who, who you know, like I, I feel like he's one sort of there's so much we, we find out about his presidency. It was a pivotal time in our country that, um, yeah, it would probably be him. Or I saw this picture the other day. There's a whole lot of stuff going on about Woodstock right now and like the why the 1999 one was bad. And I think it's the 60th anniversary, but I saw this photo of Jimi Hendrix standing on stage overlooking that. And I just like, I don't know what, it would probably be so weird to all of a sudden be talking to someone from, from that era and that iconic. But um, also, I don't know. I mean, I think they probably would be like, you know, sort of simple, sweet individuals, but they're such these sort of godlike figures to us now. The juxtaposition would be kind of interesting. Me, you, Johnny, Jimmy, we're going to get lunch sometime. It's going to be great. Yeah. JFK, be great. Jesus, Johnny Cash. And then, and, and then he can drink, a, so we'll get hammered. This is a great. This is a great. I'm hammered this is a great right now. Time. I'd want to go with somebody kind of macabre, I think. I think I'd go for somebody like Ed Gorey or oh, Edgar Allan Poe. Some, interesting. Some sort of nice. Just, yeah. Dark. Big. Big, big fan of uh, uh, of Edward Gorey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love very that. Nice. Very nice. So, Jamie, bring us home. And dinosaurs. <laughs> uh, well, Chris upstaged me because I was going to have to say Shakespeare because I just want to know who the hell he actually was. Uh, or she. Or she because I don't, I don't, I'm not sure I'm buying it. So, um, oh, yeah. we got some. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah there you go. When this question pops up, my answer is always Benjamin Franklin. I thought of, actually, I went to Jefferson. I just watched John Adams or part of John Adams again. Love to talk to any of there's so many. Yeah, absolutely. Gene, fun question. Thank you so much. I think we have time for one more quick one. Let's see what we've got. And this is going to come from... From Charles, who wants to know what technology from the show would you want to see made a reality? Sarah, the smart home. Come on. I think they kind of have. I mean, aren't they always there? No, no, no. It's not there yet, though. <laughs> yeah. Sarah, Sarah has like feelings and emotions. That's true. I don't want any more feelings or emotions in my, <laughs> <laughs> my house. There's enough with the people. <laughs> and no, the animals. But I feel like when you're home alone and you're like, you can like have a one, you know, one on one with Sarah. Yeah, what did we have? Oh my God, we had so many. Different there was so on. much stuff. I like that sky bike that Zane had, but I think we're like almost there, I feel. 
feel like yeah. we got a couple more years. And See, like, that's the thing. Everything we have, we own. Yeah. We were way ahead of our time. Yeah, Jamie. Well, Nailed it. Hold on. I mean, we did have the smartphones before they were smartphones. Just saying. Do you remember the tiny phone that was so it was so small? We just had to be ridiculous. <laughs> I was like, hello, Dad. <laughs> Maybe you have to talk about how what? Neil became the voice of the house. Well, uh, that's right. We so wrote people it, still don't we realize. It, when we decided to use the bunker, which I have to say, like Robert Petrovitz um, didn't just like produce our show and, and give us shooters when we were in Chilliwack. He actually was one of the greatest, you know, creative producers, I think, that that we had, you know, the hundred percent, hundred percent. And one of the things that, um, again, somebody who completely changed the direction of the show, we were planning for what, um, what Sarah at the smart house was going to look like. And originally, um, you know, we sort of had this sort of quintessential Victorian house, small town planned. And, um, Petro said, you know, we weren't finding an exterior that we really liked. And then we were trying to figure out like what it was going to be like on the interior. We really wanted to be able to have sort of expansive modern lines to it. And it's very hard to do that. Well, obviously with an authentic Victorian house. And he said, what if it was a bunker? And I just, you know, just lit right up. It's like, we can have a pillbox on top. We can build it underneath the way that we wanted to and make it as awesome as, as we could. And then with, uh, with Neil, um, we went in and we had him voice the temp, what was supposed to be temp audio because we were actually, we were trying, because of his obsession with Buffy, uh, we were trying to get Sarah and Michelle Geller to actually voice the smart house. And, oh my God, I remember um, that. And she wasn't interested. She turned us down. She's like, seriously, I'm Buffy. I'm not doing this. <laughs> um, but uh, we just thought it was hilarious that the temp audio would stay and never change. And so Neil has been Sarah the smart house by the what way, from, we didn't, we didn't, a lot, I get that question, did we, did we alter his voice? Yeah. It was just yeah. Neil. Yeah, yes. it just like, I love it, though. I'm so glad that through, happened I that jumped way. in, because it, it still was not certain that, that, that I was going to do it. So I just kind of like, was like, hey, hey, as soon as Sarah starts talking, <laughs> looks like it's me now. And then, Come on, give yeah. us some Sarah, Neil. Give us some Sarah. <clears throat> wow, it's been a while. Hold on. I need to do this because there's like all right, all right. I don't really, want seriously, to hear it. I'm just giving a warning because we have uh, in Vancouver right now the worst air quality of any major city in the world. What? Like, there's, what? Yeah, there's all this Less fire, loving, fire more ash. Sarah. Come on, all over the place. Yeah. Oh, when Neil does this, full size him. All right, come on, Neil. Let's hear it. <clears throat> <clears throat> um. You, buddy. Hello. <laughs> This is Sarah speaking. I think I'm a little bit deeper right now, but usually it was a little bit more sing-songy, kind of like this. <laughs> and there was a little bit of an echo that was put on, but that was about it. The rest was just me talking like this. Oh my God. Yes! Uh, oh, that wow, so it's been like good. nine years since and, it's been and one, and one of my favorite deliveries from Colin Ferguson, he just took that pause and he was like, Fargo, is that you just talking like a girl? <laughs> no. What? Uh, Neil, be honest. You do that every single day in your shower. I just I do it in my mirror. What are you talking about? <laughs> my, aren't you uh, handsome today? <laughs> yeah. so Neil, uh, I, I don't think everybody knows out there. Oh you know, my there, God, that's you funny. The, there, you can buy time, like breakout rooms with people. I think that Neil, you know, recording you're answering your voicemail outgoing. It's playing Sarah's <laughs> card house. I be, wish my Siri sounded like everybody Sarah. Should Sarah. Yeah, so be people great. are like, will be that. They're like, can you make like a, a, a Sarah Siri or Alexa or something? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> How would I know that? You're like, I don't control it. <laughs> Oh, Charles, thank you so much. That was a Thanks, great question. Bill. A distinguished guest this has been an absolute delight. Any final words for our audience before we go? Thank you so much for thank thank you. You you're watching Rico alive. Yeah. yeah. Thank After, you it's been almost a decade now. Thank you so much. Um, Jamie, they want a reunion movie or something. I, can, I get messages every day. Every day. I would like to say right now, all of us, are we on board for a reunion? Yeah. Oh, yes. Would you guys do it? Yeah. 100%. Yeah. 
I, I, I'm telling you, I get messages every single day. People are like, where's Still the movie? Still to this day, why don't we have yeah. a reunion? Come on. Why don't we have, I would do it together. Sally's hashtag. really busy directing, Sally. though. Are you going to do it, Sally? I'm directing it. Excellent. Yay! All right, make it a hashtag, Eureka Reunion. Let's get that ball rolling out there. And distinguished guest, it's been my absolute pleasure to serve you all today. Once again, thank you for joining us on the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Thank you to our audience for joining us today. Thank you for those wonderful questions. We hope to see you all again soon. Until then, bye-bye, everyone. Take care. And remember that smiles are free. Spend them often. <laughs>